crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to part 8 of my Give It A Whirl workshop series. In this part, we will conclude the series and create a simple bookmark project which combines fun dies from two different sets. We're going to be using the recent, recently, I guess it would be called retired, recently retired counting sheep stamp set. It was a free celebration item. And we're going to be using the dies that were another celebration item to cut out this cute little sheep. And we're going to combine that with some elements from the Give It A Whirl die set. And then I'm going to conclude the series and show you all the projects we created, all the interactive cards and boxes we created in this series. So you may be wondering, how does this move? How does this interact? This is not an interactive project. It's just one more way that you can use your dies from the Give It A Whirl series to create projects. So we're, not, we're going to take this wheel and we usually make this wheel into an interactive card. But this time we're just going to take it and we're going to make it into an element that we can stamp on and use for our project. So let's get out some basic white paper. You have some in your kit. And somebody at the end of this series, I'll explain who won. There are two people that won actually. The, all the projects I created in this series. I'll be showing you all those projects. I did a drawing recently in my VIP group. And I wanted to mail those projects out this week, so I just wanted to make sure that I announced the winner and show you all those projects. I will also be announcing my next technique series, so you can get ready for that. I'm just cutting this in half so it fits through the, the die cutting machine, so, sort of in half, because you only have a six inch width for your machine. So let's go ahead and take, you got your stamp and cut and bust machine, cutting plate one, cutting plate two, which is the magnetic die adapter, or actually called thin die adapter. We need a cutting plate three. We need a piece of basic white. We're gonna cut out one wheel. So let's just go ahead and cut out one wheel. But while we're here, you could cut out your clouds and things from your, a couple things from your counting sheep if you would like. So I just slid them, thought I slid them off. Okay, so let's cut out. Now I'm gonna cut out some of these in pool party, but it doesn't mean that you can't cut out some in white because you can always color them. If you don't have all the cardstock I'm using, just cut it out in the colors that you do have. We can't cut out the little Mr. S Mr. Uh, sheep yet. And I'm gonna cut this out in different colors, but we can cut out all these other elements. So this is from Give It A Whirl, and so are these stitched clouds, and so are these stitched hearts. These two are from the counting sh sheep dies. I'm gonna show you what that looks like, the set, in a moment. I figured, I mean, I didn't just figure, I know a lot of my customers have these because I saw your orders and a lot of you ordered the sheep dies and the sheep as your celebration, as your free celebration items during that promotion we had. So, and I know that the sheep dies, I think they even sold out. So I know how popular these are and I know a lot of you have these now, but in the sheep dies, there's a different cloud and it just hap it doesn't happen to be like stitched like this one like, as cute. So that's why I'm using this one. I'm just going to take a piece of pool party to put these on so you can see them. So you need, to, you need to get your crafty goodness, your bucket of crafty goodness, and you need to just build it up with extra little elements that you can put together your projects quickly and easily. So that stitched cloud is fantastic. There's three clouds in the set. There's stitched stars, stitched clouds. So I'm just doing that. And we'll do that. Stitch, three stitched hearts. This little balloon is from the sheep dies. And we need the wheel. Let's cut out this little flag here. Okay, so we have lots of good elements to use for our cards. We have the wheel with the nice scalloped edge. Let's take this one off. Okay, we're gonna save this to stamp our sheep on. And now we're going to cut out a couple clouds in. I like pool party. Pool party is a good color. It's always good for. <laughs> so Nola's Nola's commenting about in 2019. She's saying she saw how in one of my videos I had 15,000 subscribers. Right? So in two years, it's doubled. So thank you guys for that. That's nice. I'm glad. Good observation, Nola. 
She's one of my paper chefs, and she's always making good observations. That's cool. So thank yeah, thank you all for like helping this channel grow so much. It's so fun. I just love to share. Where did my clouds go? I'm mean, sometimes like the absent-minded professor, though. Oh, I knew where my clouds went. I just put them on this paper. So we need to cut out some clouds in pool party. And while you're at it, if you want to cut out hearts and I mean whatever you want to cut out. You can cut out more of while you're there. Never let a good die cut pass through go to waste, right? So you, that way you're making the most out of when you crank through your machine. I probably should have put the handle on the other side. So now we're going to pop those out. Put those. I just pop them out with the take your pick tool. And, you know, not even sure where we're going to put them yet. You, we're going to be using the Pattern Party Designer Series paper. And so you want to, like, just have different things that coordinate with that paper. That paper's in your kit. Pretty sure it is. I have so many kits now I can't keep it all straight. But uh, you, it's a paper that it just has 24 different pages on it. It's like 12, 12 sheets with different backgrounds, and there's 24 different patterns. And Pool Party is one of the coordinating colors, so I just figured, well, let's make that for the bookmark because I think a lot of you have that. All right, so now we're going to make our little sheep. We're going to go ahead and stamp our sheep on. I like to take a silicone mat when I stamp. Put that up there. We're going to use this sheep because when you make a bookmark, this sheep looks good because he's standing up, right? These two will kind of overlap, and they'll go, they'll go outside your bookmark. Like, they'll, they'll be wider, which is fine. So... I just thought it was good. This sheep was good because he kind of looks like he's standing up on the bookmark. So let's take your silicone mat when you're stamping. And we're going to take the, well, we would take the sheep out of the stamp set, which I would keep stored back here. This is how I store them. Sticking on here, but I've already have that one mounted. So you would take it off and you'd mount it onto your stamping block, which is a stamping block D. And I always like to do everything from scratch, at the, from starting at the beginning. And I, in my technique series, you'll see lots of tips and tricks. So that's why I like to start at the beginning. So don't, if you, if you already know how to do it, just go ahead and grab your stuff and follow along by all means. Don't worry about me repeating things. Just be happy you already know it and don't need it repeated. So always stamp a couple of those guys. I'm just stamping one on each side so I can put some other stuff between when I run it through. All right, so we have the cute little sheep, and now we're going to run it through. We only have one of these dies, so we have to run through one at a time. And, of course, those of you that have a scan and cut would not be using the dies for this. You would be using your machine. This is a really easy one to cut out with the machine. But I happen to have dies, and when I have dies, I tend to just use those because it's easier, especially when you're just doing one or two cards. So while I'm here, I like to... Always make extra little balloons and stuff because to me, you can never have too many balloons. Now for this, you want to take your little piece of painter's tape. I have a piece I, I just keep reusing. And just make sure you stick it on there because you don't want your die to slip. So now go ahead and make a couple more hearts or whatever you want to make. Maybe make a couple more balloons, flags, clouds, whatever you want to make. We've already made some, but while we're running it through, make some more, right? Use up every space. In fact, to use up, there's another die that I like to use up a lot. It's this one because I can never have too many of these for my sentiments. Let's just do that. Let's see if we can squeeze him in there, up there. Put this cloud there. Put the heart up there. And like these don't matter if they slip because they're just kind of like extra pieces, right? Those pieces. But this one matters if it slips. It has to be on the stamped image exactly. So that's why I put it like that. Put the cover the cover on there and we're going to roll it through and I think that's all that let me just double check but I think that's all the die cutting we need so I can get that off my table we oh I was gonna I did do this one in the craft paper I was using craft paper for the bookmark but I won't make this a next heart in craft paper but that would be the only other thing I die cut I just happened to make it when I was cutting all right, I think that's all the die cutting we need, so we'll put that over there. And I can get rid of this machine now and make more room. 
It's better to have more room on the table. So let's put all this down here. We're going to knock these off. Okay, I think I like I like uh, have some magnetic sheets for my dies to help to help like keep from losing them and things, but that's not right here right now, is it? Oh yeah, it's kind of over there. So I want to show you both sets of dies so you know where these came from and I put them back where they came from, so you're not confused about which dies I got, I'm using for what in this project. And I'll show you in the catalog where this came from in case. Hey, maybe even though it's part eight of the series, maybe you're just starting out here. Maybe this is your first video on the Give It a Whirl. Maybe you just got it. We'll go back and watch the whole series. Lots of fun stuff in this series. I know I learned a lot. I hope you did. It was definitely challenging to use those dies, but I we figured it out, made lots of projects, and, you know, as my mom always used to say, get your money's worth, right? Got my money's worth out of that project or out of that product. All right, so there. Now let me put these, let me find the little magnetic sheet. So this, these these are the what's called the Give It A Whirl dies. And so in putting back things on this one, and of course I should have traced them and everything. So this one goes with the Give It A Whirl. It's a pretty good little banner. These little hearts, so you have three stitched hearts not to mention the heart window. You have your clouds, three kinds of clouds. This one doesn't work as well in the bookmark. It's a little bigger for my design, so I couldn't use that one. And let's put this other stitched heart back. And then you have this one, and of course the one that we use to make all our card bases with. We Of course we have that one too. Let's see if that one's around. Putting some extra little pieces around. Well, it should be. So there's there's another whole piece to go with this, which actually we used to make our cards with. So let's put that over there, just so you know. Now in the sheep dies, let's see. This is the tailor made tag dies. Lots of lots of sets of dies around. Well, the rest are in my sheep dies, but I can't find my sheep die case, but so be it. So we are, we'll find it, because as I, as I do my videos, like things just sort of appear on my, in my work area. So now let me show you this. Oh, here they go. Here we go. Here we go. I found it. This is the other part of the Give It A Whirl dies. So that's a complete set of Give It A Whirl dies. You need this for your card base. So that's what that looks like. Now the sheep dies look like this. Okay, these are really cute. Now see how they have clouds with them? So you're not confused. When you see this bookmark, not this bookmark, this bookmark, look how I use the stitch clouds instead. I don't like, not that I don't like these clouds, but I think these clouds are cuter, right? So I use these clouds. So I'm putting these dies back so you can see that where, so I'm using two sets of dies and that's what I want you to understand. Just use whatever materials you have, combine them together it does not matter. Always make fun stuff. And there should be one little flag, one more little metal flag somewhere. It's like a little tiny banner and he's somewhere. He, he's this guy. So that's the only thing missing from here. Oh, here he is. No, he's right there. So you, this one, so this little banner, this little balloon, and this little sheep is what I got out of this set. And you can cut out all, your, all of it with the sheep dies. And they were free. They were free during celebration. All right, so let's build this up. Now we got to get the coloring techniques and things going on. Now you're going to use whatever is in your stash, right? Always use whatever's in your stash. I'm using craft paper because I have so much craft paper. And you can use, for the back of your bookmark, you could use your pool party card stock. I know a lot of you have that. A lot of you have the, if you took my Butterfly Brilliance Boot Camp, you had some some other cardstock like the petal pink. So you had lots of different colors of cardstock. So what you need to do now is just cut the, and let me show you what those, oh, let me show you what these dies look like. This is what the Give It A World dies look like. Let me zoom in. That's what the set looks like complete. So if I'm, if I'm missing some, just so you know, there were 21 dies in that set. So just so, just so you know, I'm getting out the craft paper. 
that I can use. This craft paper is six by six. I'm using it for the bookmarks. I'm going to zoom back out. But that's what we focused on in the series. Give it a whirl. And it says use on page 57. See, so this is, this is the wheel that we just cut out. It can be used for interactive cards, interactive boxes, and things like that. So it's just super cute die set. I'm so glad we delved into it. Anyway, so now get your pool party paper. And you're going to cut the pool party and, the, and this. So you need to cut this, this craft paper is for the back of your bookmark. And use any cardstock you want. I'm just using this because it's a neutral color. So you're going to go in here and make it two inches. Okay, make it two inches. Two inches wide. Okay, let's put that there so you don't see the glare. Okay, two inches. And then it really doesn't matter how long you make it, but I made them. I made this five and a quarter. I made these five and a quarter. Now, because these are, I'll, I'll go ahead and make it five and a quarter just so you see. Let's make sure. So you always want to make the next part of your bookmark. I'm going to go ahead and make two of these. Always make two while you're at it. Make two of every project. In fact, I'm giving two of these away, but the others I'll just use for my thank yous and things just for team members. All right, so there you go. So that's two by five and a quarter. Now we're going to take these, and because those were two, let's write this down for you. On a piece of scrap paper. Five and a quarter by two. And then we need five by one and three quarters, see? So this is the DSP. And this will be the cardstock. So your cardstock layer, I'm just gonna write bookmark. I tend to write things down later in my blog post. Like I just got done writing the blog post for part seven, which was like a week ago. So it might take me a week to get this typed up. But now you have the measurements right there for those of you that need it right now. And you're following along with me. So there you go. I'm going to just make these 1.75, these two, because they need to be a quarter inch. They need to be a quarter inch smaller than these, right? And this one was already the right, the right length. It was already... You know, 1.75 or 1 and 3 fourths, and then it was already a quarter inch smaller than this. So it was already 5 inches. Now I've got to make this one 5 inches so that it also layers up. So now we're going to just be done with the cutting, and then we can do our gluing. But never glue until you do your punching. And I'm going to use a punch that I like to use. We have three different punches. Maybe some are retired, but I like to use this one. It's called the Fancy Tag Topper Punch to make my tags. Now you could have used your give it a whirl die like you could have used like a little heart you could have just cut squares and used a little heart to make your hole for your ribbon if you don't have a die punch but why wouldn't you have a die punch if you're a crafter you need to make your tags bookmarks right so I'm going to put these together like this and I'm going to use the fancy tag topper punch to punch but I'm not going to glue them until after I've already done my punching because I don't want to gunk up I don't want to get glue in here and gunk up my punch. So never put glue or rolling adhesive or anything for that matter on your bookmark and then try to punch through it. You'll get a, you'll get a big hot mess and you'll gunk up your punches. Okay. All right. I hope I didn't get glue on too many things there. That's okay. It's all good. That's not that part. Okay. So I'm a mess, very messy crafter, but I never sweat it because I get, as long as I don't Ruin my tables and things. Okay, so that's that one done. Now we're going to take this one and this one. It's, I hope they don't stick together too much because a little glue got dumped on there. Put them together like that with that quarter inch margin. This is called Pattern Party Designer Series Paper. And it's one of our papers that you can get when you place an order of $150 or more. It's for host, but I put it in almost, I think I put it in all my kits. In fact, it'll be in my next kit as well. You get like six sheets of it in my next kit because I like to put this in the kits because it's so versatile because on one side it's black and white and on the other side it's colored. And there's so many coordinating colors in this paper plus it's just something that has like patterns for every occasion. Okay, so there's our two bookmarks. Now let's show you how to make the 
So for the sheep, this is what I did. I just took some blends I have. So again, there's no right or wrong way. You know, you might hear different people do different things, but I'm going to take, I just found some blends that would go well. So I just grabbed some really light blends I had. And I just did a, I took like the lightest one I could see. I thought this was the lightest. It's called Mint Macron. And I just went like this. I just went, I just went and traced. Wait, actually, I got the brush side. It's so easy just to give it a little bit of a tint. See how it has a little bit of a tint on the edge, a little bit of dimension. So I just went like this. I'm just kind of doing it in the air so you can see that it really does not matter. Right? I went around the edges of it, yada, 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 with this light mint macaron, macaron. I'm not even sure if I'm saying it right. Right? And it gave it a little bit of dimension. And then I took my pool party. This is pool party. Dark pool party. And I colored in his little face. Actually, I think I used light pool party earlier, but now I'm using dark. It's all good. It doesn't matter. Bottom line is I use pool party and mint macron to color my little sheep. And you can also use, if you want to do, like I've done it in the past with other animals, smoky slate, crumb cake, you know, when I did it with other animals. So I put a little bit of pool party on there, and now I want to take the dark mint macron for his little hooves. And again, use grays or, uh, but I was trying to, I was trying to go for like a colorful sheep. And then I put some dimensionals behind it. But don't, don't attach it yet, because he has to be attached on top of the other part. And I did, let, I'm just doing this part so it dries. Then I took my wink of Stella. And you're going to put glitter all over your little sheep for dimension. Okay, so he's just a cute little sheep. He has a little bit of color to him. Could have used smoky slate. Could have used, you know, something else for his little hooves. But I was going for like a colorful, festive sheep. So there he is. And now we're going to put your amazing. So I'm putting that. And so now we want to take this. Well, first, before I do that, I would probably cut this apart and ink it up. So I'm going to cut this apart and then ink it up. And then I'll, then I'll put the You're Amazing on top of it because if I mess up the inking up, then I can just go for it, F you know, fix it and use a different one. So I'm trying to, I'm lining up that circle. I'm just cutting this in quarters. So I'm lining up the circle like that. See, that's all. Just cut this in quarters. Line up your circle. There's my quarters. I'm just doing this one off camera to not make you dizzy because I already got my darn uh, microphone cord stuck inside my trimmer, which is all good, but I just want to cut the other one. So basically I'm just cutting these and I'm just going to lay them there. Now I'm going to use a little sponge brush, a little blending brush, which again, I know a lot of my customers have and the rest of you, I don't know what you're waiting for. Everybody has to have blending brushes. So I'm going to take, this is just some ink I've already mixed together. It's my own little ombre pad. You can't really see it, but I use Pool Party and Balmy Blue. Here, let me just put some on my, I'm just going to go and put some on my silicone mat because I was trying to blend two colors together because Pool Party was too light. Balmy Blue was too dark. So I kind of like those two colors together. They're both light blues, but... Now what I'm doing is I'm blending for contrast. You can't stick a white sheep on a piece of white and expect him to stand out. But then again, you can't stamp onto, the, onto this and expect that to stand out. So I'm, I'm leaving room. I'm making this part darker, light for stamping, darker for contrast so that the sheep contrasts with this little bottom little, I'm going to call it his little dance stage because the sheep looks like he's dancing on a stage. So that'll be his little stage. And I'm just kind of inking that up is all I'm doing. And we'll do two of them. And if we mess up, we'll have others to work with. Tap, tap, tap with some ink. Again, pool party, balmy blue, whatever colors you have that sort of are light, that can sort of match, coordinate. We don't really say match. We just say coordinate and stamp it up. That's what we say when, when colors, when the colors just look well together, we say, oh, those colors coordinate. Tap, tap, tap. In other words, you never want to go right into your ink pad because you want to you want to put some ink on there first or on a little stamping block first. Okay, and now, now I already have the Your Amazing mounted. I'm just going to use Memento Black ink again. 
And let's go ahead and use the bookmark measurements page. There's your book measurements. Here we go. I'm just going to use that to stamp on too because we don't, we don't want to mess up. Always make sure your ink, you've got your stamp on, that it's not upside down, that your ink is coming out well before you stamp right onto the element that you spent time die cutting. And it gets a little stuck, but tap it off. There you go. So that's how you make the little parts of the bottom of the bookmark. And now we're going to glue those on. Put some glue on that part. Don't put glue on this part because it sticks out these sides on the bottom. So you're just putting glue on the top part. And you kind of want to cover up. You're kinda, you kind of let it stick out the bottom, but you want to cover up like the corners. Let it, let it cover the corners of the bottom of the bookmark. Okay, and a little bit of glue. So see how I'm making two at once? No extra time, no extra time needed to just make two at once. You can make a bunch of these at once. It's always good to have sort of an assembly line process. Even though I only just did one of the little sheepies, I'm still getting these ready. So you have them ready for your sheep. Okay. So now let's do this and I'll show you how I did the balloon. As I say hi to you guys, I need to say hi to you guys. We'll color some balloons, put those there. I used petal pink for my balloon. Let me find my samples again. I used petal pink and I used the black for the, just a black marker. Here's a black marker. And then here's a petal, a petal pink blend, and that's how I'm coloring my balloon with. Only because it coordinated with my... Oh, you know what? They, it fell on the floor. It's like, where'd my sample go? I heard a clunk earlier. That's what happened to my sample. All right, so we're going to take... So this, we're just doing a balloon like this. So let's do the pool party first. I mean, the petal pink first. Just color the balloon, that's all. Not rocket science. So the die cut didn't come with a stamp for the balloon. You're just making balloons... It just came with a die cut for the balloon. So petal pink, and then you're going to take your black marker and you're just going to color the, the string of the balloon so that it stands out against the background. This is one of the only, I think it's the only marker that we can sell, that we sell by itself. I think it's $3. It's, it's the only marker like black. It, all the other markers come in sets, like five, a set of five for ink colors or a set of more than that for the other. So we're going to put, so we're going to put this time. I Let's do, let's put this one over here. Since I put the balloon on that one, let's use this one and let's put the balloon over here. So what I did is I glued the balloon straight down and I'm going to say hi to you guys. Hi, Deb. Hi, Katie. Hi, Yvonne. Yeah, it's the last of our Give It A Whirls. Nola's saying, she's sad it's the last of the Give It A Whirls. Well, it doesn't mean I won't keep using it, but I have to move on to my next series because I try to make these two months and in the next series it's going to be two months. So like it's October, November. And since October started, it kind of got the best of me. I said, what happened? How, how did we get to October already? And then I need to start my new series. So it's not that I won't keep using this. Hey, you know what? Maybe I could use it in combination. That would be fun with the next series. But either way, I, I know that most of you have this already. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the balloon down. I got to, first of all, before I land the balloon down, I got to go like that. It has to be under this a little. Well, it doesn't have to be under it. It can be over it, actually. So it can be over it in his hand. But I just want to, I need to put the sheep down first then. It's over. I was making sure. So even though I'm gluing this to the bottom, I need to put my little sheep down first. And what I want to do for the sheep is just cover that little point. So you stick the sheep right there. And now you can put this little balloon in his hand. See, it's glued right to the bookmark because it just is easier that way because it's a string. It was easier than putting it on dimensionals and letting it get caught on stuff. Okay, so that's what you can do. Now you can either take your, so you've got your pool party clouds. It's up to you whether you want to put your clouds or your hearts on here. I found it was easier to put the, the balloon. I thought it was easier with the balloon, the one with the balloon, to put the hearts on that one. See, there's the hearts. Then it was putting, see there, there wasn't enough room for the clouds on this one. So for that, you want to take, you have, you have to you just use your Stampin' Dimensionals for something that small. Oh, these are the big Stampin' Dimensionals. You probably want to use the small Stampin' Dimensionals for something that small. 
or we cut them. Let's just see. Let's just see if I can't get my... And then we'll put Wink Costello on all this stuff too, and then we'll put the string through it. All right, we said, hello, Vela, Vela C. Okay, Katie's saying she needs to make another one of these. Give it a whirl. Yep, yeah, I, I love that you can make birthday cards. And I think it's just, to me, these really make people smile. Uh, that's what my experience is. I found that they just appear. My small dimensionals just appeared. Everybody who I've given these to has totally cracked up. And it was like... Well, one of them hasn't even messed with the box yet. They didn't realize it was an interactive box. But they love my little box of treats. They were like, oh, I love your box of treats. I'm like, did you spin it yet? So now next time I give one to someone, I'm going to be like, hello, you need to spin the box. They didn't even spin the top of the box. All that work. But anyway, they loved it, though. They loved the treat box itself. It didn't even matter that they didn't spin it. They still loved it. So can imagine if they, once they figure out that they can spin it. I'm just putting Wink Estelle on everything, as you can see. I hope it's not too blurry as me going so fast, but I just, this is the petal pink balloon and the pool party heart and the little white heart, which I could have colored if I wanted to. Did I already put Wink Estella on the sheep? I think I did, but he needs more. That's how you do it. Now we're going to take our little, so that's how you would do this one. So there's your clouds and there's your clouds. So I don't want to, I don't want to cut out another sheep right now, only because of time, right? But you would have your sheep right here. And you, you put your clouds right there with some Wink Estelle on your clouds, and that's how you get that one. So now that you, in your kit, you all have some different ribbon, and I, I put different ribbons. Some of you got this pool party ribbon, and some of you got this pool party ribbon. So I'm just using both, just, just so you know. And the way I, I like to measure my ribbon for bookmarks is I like to take one of my stamp sets. Because remember, you don't always have a ruler when you're crafting, right? And I just go like that. I just go diagonal across my craft... Uh, across my stamp set and that's way bigger than you need but you can go shorter than that as well I just go diagonal across and then I get my little snips and I snip it at an angle snip it at an angle fold the two together so you could use twine and ribbon two kinds of ribbon I'm just using two pool party ribbons one has like lines on it and one doesn't if you're trying to buy it the one this one is it was part of a set. I can't remember the set, but this one is. But this one is available, and it's called Pool Party Sheer Ribbon. Is what it's called. But I did include some ribbons in your kit, so you have enough ribbons to make a bookmark. You don't might not have a punch, but then just, like I said, cut it, cut a square or cut a rectangle. And if you don't have a punch, just take your little heart, your smallest heart, that one, and use that for the hole, and make yourself a little tag or a bookmark. So use whatever you have. And maybe you have a corner rounder. You can round the corners. So that's how you do it. And then you stretch that out a little bit. And there you go. So these bookmarks are going to be part of the prizes that I give out. So what happens in my series, so I hope you enjoyed that. That's how to make, that's how to make a cute little project using your elements from your kit. Elements from two different sets. So in my series, I like to really delve deep. And you saw how we how we delve deep into this if you were around. So I'm going to now go through what I did in this entire series. From part, from part one, this is part eight. Okay? So I'm going to go through. The part one was just called, and by the way, I have to say hi to the last couple of you guys. So, yeah, so Katie's saying definitely make multiples. She's saying make multiples of whatever you're doing to make, to make it easy for yourself. As you can see, I'm always collecting my little extra elements. Okay, and that's why sometimes I never know where I got things from because I'm, I'm always like, I don't know where this one came from because I cut so many extras. Hello from Utah. Hello, Elaine. And hello, honeybee stampers from Florida. All right, so the first, all I did for the first part of the series, I'm just grabbing my notes. It was called, here, I have my little scribble scribble. Get to know your dies. We went through all these dies. I told you, I gave you homework. We made templates for stamping, et cetera, et cetera. Then in part two, we made cute Halloween cards for part two. That was what we did. I had so many of these. I've already given them all away. This is the last one I have. And it's part of the prize for the whole series. Okay, you put a smile on my face. These were all from cutest Halloween stamp set. It's also the stamp set that was just featured 
on World Card Making Day. Here's my table. Too crowded already, let's see. On During World Card Making Day, I also featured cute Halloween cards and I did this tutorial. And if you missed World Card Making Day, that was, a, I did it with eight girls, eight of us did it. We all did presentations on Facebook. So check out my Facebook page where I showed how to make these cute Halloween cards. They don't whirl. These were simple, simple cards. I actually did it in under a half hour, which was very hard for me to do a video in under a half hour. But I did it in under a half hour. Because we were all trying to focus on half hour presentations or less, 15 to 30 minutes, to make sure we all had time to do a four hour presentation on World Card Making Day. Anyway, this is what we did for that. Now inside, I think it says, have, nope, I didn't put, I need to do that before I give it away today. I need to put have a fabulous Halloween, like I did on insides of these. Maybe I'll add some designer stretch paper like I did here, or like I did here. So this one needs, this one definitely needs an inside. I hadn't finished that card yet. But that's what it looks like when you, you take this kind of simple card, same designer series paper, same embellishments, everything. Use your Give It A World dies, and you end up with this fantastic interactive card. Okay, and my scan and cut helped me cut out extra little ghost and things. Then in part three, that was part two, part three we did Bloom Where You're Planted. We made hope boxes, and I had a different style of this that I've already given away, and it, it was using the, the Hope Paper Pumpkin Kit, but this one, this one doesn't have the treats in it yet, but it, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Sending healing thoughts your way. You make a difference every day, right? Thinking of you. So I just used different stamps I had from Inspired Thoughts Bundle and from old paper pumpkin kits I have. And I decorated this mini paper pumpkin box, inside and out. I'll have to add the treats back to this. The one I gave away had treats inside. So I showed you how to do this start to finish. What's really nice about this kind of mini paper pumpkin box is we didn't have to adjust our dies. The die fit on top of this box. We just had to add some Cajun Crates cardstock behind it, which came in your kit. And this just fit on there. And then we just had to change the orientation of our project. So that's what we did in part three. In part four, we did Penguin Playmates cards. And in Penguin Playmates cards, I showed you how to take the designer series paper, like for example, this paper, line it up exactly so that you're one of your critters heads, I think we did a, a polar bear that day, but this one was in a sample, the snowman. One of your critters heads is lined up exactly in the window. Isn't that fun? So this one's be cool, be merry, be chill. So this was one of the celebration papers that, that I used for this. And I used all coordinating colors, like uh, Calypso Coral and Fresh Freesia. Let's see if this one's complete. Good, that one's complete. So that was part four. Now part five, candy canes. I wrote candy canes. What's that about? Oh, color changing cards. This was super fun. In part five of the series, I showed you how to use background stamps. This is a candy cane background stamp. Again, how to avoid that line from the dies. We avoided the line. We lined up exactly our pattern so that we can make color changing cards. And they don't just color change, they wobble too. There's the polar bear. I knew we had a polar bear in there. That was for this part. So this is a color changing card, meaning that lines up, you got your, your candy canes, and then that was in Just Jade, by the way. Just Jade was the color, and Poppy Prayed. Okay, and see how they line up exactly, but they change color, isn't that cool? So that was just one of the effects you can do with the Give It A Whirl cards. Actually here, let's just go this way so you can see. It's more magical when you go from one color to the other color. <laughs> You can even give someone the card like this, and then later they'll figure out that it whirls. And they, the candy cane background stamp, I used the stamp apparatus with that to help line it up. I even lined up this layer here, and then this was from the layering diorama dies. I'm always using different sets of dies together. The layering diorama dies is just great for extra elements, so always make extra pieces. So that was part five. All right, now part six, we did snowflake boxes. I wrote we did snowflake boxes. Let's find those. These, I made two of these. This is using some paper that was in your kit. Feels like frost designer, specialty designer series paper. And the snowflake is on top of the brad. I attached the snowflake to the brad so that the snowflake moves as the box moves. And this one was a little trickier, but I did do the measurements. It's all on my blog. 
thepaperchef.com and it's on my blog and you'll see like the measurements on how to make this box. How to make this box. We made this box from scratch using balmy blue, balmy blue cardstock that came in your kit. And we used the blending technique. We used the blending brush to color some of this to match, to coordinate, right, with the box. Okay, there's nothing in that box. I need to add my treats before I give the prizes away. Let's see if there's something in this box. And this box, they're all a little different. You can see I've been ransacking my boxes. I had them all full of candy, and then I start ransacking them, eating everything. So now i got to, before I give my prizes away, I have to refill, refill them again with the treats. Okay, so this is what we did in part six. Okay, let's open up this one, see what's in it. Okay, homemade boxes. Yep, some treats in this one, good. So you can see how much stuff fits in there. And I gave you all the measurements for making the box from scratch. We used a white cardstock for the bottom, balmy blue for the top. And then for part seven, are we up to part seven? Part seven, we, we played with the Sweet Stockings Designer Series paper. Here's what we made in part seven. The Give It A Whirl cards have a special element to them. And the reason I have little arrows is because they work better going in one direction versus the other. Because something happens when you spin them. So these are, I'm just going to spin it up because the arrow says to spin it up. So we have a little cat in the stocking. Then we have a little hamster in the stocking. And then, doo, 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 the puppy comes out and he's on a spring. Isn't that cool? So he's on a spring, it's like a jack-in-the-box card. So he comes out and he looks like he's hanging over the top of the stocking. And we'll do it again with this one, but this one's gonna go down. Only because it just spins better in one direction versus the other. So I, this one spins better down, the other one spins better up because of where I put extra little stickers behind as spacers. Let's see. Pop, and he pops open. But you can't keep going because he's popped, he's popped up. You have to push him back down, or you could actually leave him like that, he's so cute. You could leave this card like that. But I did is pop, push him back down, shove him back under there, and feel free if you do win this prize that you got, you got the uh, take it apart, figure out how I did it. Actually, I think I loaded it this way. Yeah, because what happened is I was putting extra stickers. Throughout this course, I put some extra stickers behind these little extra sections as spacers to help keep things going smoothly and making things not get stuck. And in doing that, I that's why he was getting a little twisted. So that was Sweet Stockings Designer Series Paper. So then in Part 8, of course, you saw how we just used elements to create these bookmarks. So that was Part 8. So now I will announce the winners. I had in my VIP group, I went in and did a drawing of everybody that purchased a kit. So to be part of the drawing, you had to purchase a kit. The, you, don't, you don't have to purchase a kit to ever get my videos on YouTube. They're obviously free to everybody. And all these tutorials are on my blog and all the, you know, it's free to everybody. This one is free, like this, this series was. So you, I, I did a drawing and Katie, Katie L and she happens to be here right now, which is cool. I wonder if you already knew that you won from the VIP group or not, because you're in the VIP group. And Sheila won prize number two. So prize number one is that Katie gets all seven of these projects. She gets one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these, all seven. She's gonna get all seven. This, this is your project. Then they're gonna have treats inside, of course, once I figure out. And I'm gonna actually finish this card. So you're gonna get seven projects. And now Sheila, who won second place, is going to get one, two, she gets the doubles. So she won second place, so she's gonna get these things. She's gonna get this, like one of these, one of these, one of these, and one of these. Because I don't have any extras of these right now. But, so you're gonna get four, four prizes, okay? So thank you for participating in my series. And to some, I just wanna show you what we're doing next time. It's called Gift, gift Giving Workshop Series. Don't mind all my scribble scribble. But this is my next workshop, Gift Giving Workshop. It's linked in the description where it says kits and labels and things. And the Gift Giving Workshop is focusing on a few sets of dies. And the, the, the dies are from the holiday catalog and the annual catalog. So I need to show you both. So in the annual catalog, it's, ba it's, it's focusing tailor-made tag dies. It's focusing on this set of dies. So this set of dies is called tailor-made tag dies. 
and then we're going to focus on, but we're going to use lots of other stamp sets as well. We're not just using that. Of course, we're using, we're using many other stamp sets. But this bundle, if you get the deluxe kit, you're going to get the bundle. So you're going to get this bundle, gift giving, the time of giving bundle, and gift giving dies. And that's what some of the fantastic projects you can create using those. So these are stitched, it's a set of, set of stitch dies. You actually have to see them to understand how cool they are. So what I'm going to do in my first part of my series, and within the next week or so is when I plan on doing it, launching it, is because I'm working on the kits, I'm working on kits now, is I'm going to show, I'm going to do an orientation to how these dies work and how these dies work. So that's going to be our orientation. Get to know your dies. That's what I do the first of all my, in my series. And then we'll make projects throughout. We're making box tops, we're making tags, and we're decorating boxes. Okay, so it, you always get lots of things in your kits. And you might not even get to use all the things in your kits that I give you. But you're going to get specialty papers, you're going to get designer series paper, and you're going to be able to follow along. Maybe some velvet. You want to put little Santa in velvet? You can. You want to put it in foil? You can. Right? Because you're going to have different options. We're going we're gonna to make fall tags, winter tags, and festive tags. So it's just going to be a lot of fun in that series. So that's what the series is about. You can, of course, purchase the supplies from whatever country you're in. But if you're in the U.S., you can purchase them from my store or as part of kits. But if you just want to get the supplies and use your own things to follow along the dies, you can go to my store, Stampin' Up. If you want to get a kit, then go to the link in the description of this video and find the information about the kits. All right. Thank you, Jen. I'm glad you found me. First visit to my channel. Thank you for visiting. And thank you all for watching today. And we'll see you in the next series real soon. Bye for now. This is the Paper Chef.